Everybody, everybody has a tendency. I feel like people have the tendency of going towards that, even though they say they're drama free. What's drama free? I have no idea. <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> no, I mean um, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Drama free. I think it's when people respect your boundaries. How do you identify like a non toxic person? A good question. I don't know. You don't? No. Uh, it's easy. How? A person who's toxic crosses your boundaries. They don't respect them. So when you tell them like this, this, and this, I don't like this, and they still do it, then I would consider that a toxic person. It's true. I don't consider myself to have that many boundaries though. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? To have, to not have boundaries? Yeah. Uh, to each their own, I guess. I don't know. No, but I find it weird because some people have no, um, v no gray zone. It's or black or white type of yeah, thing. Yeah. And that's where the boundaries are in the gray, no? Hmm. Because it's it's always a question of it's like a dance. You have to find a partner that dances to your rhythm in yeah. that way. Because somebody that's toxic for you could be amazing for somebody else. Yeah, exactly. But how do you determine, or do you believe can somebody transform to somebody toxic, or yes. they've been yeah. toxic from the beginning? Of course. No, I think I think you can transform somebody. Like relationships, you can, can become turn you. toxic. Yeah, you can turn someone toxic. Yeah, but I think that's the main thing is to have boundaries. That's how you know when it's a toxic person. When they cross your boundaries. Do your boundaries change during the relationship? It, they shouldn't. They shouldn't? No. So you have the same boundaries with everybody? Well, no, like your relationships like differ, right? Like whether yes. it's with friends, whether it's with its... With But even among or, your relationships, are your boundaries different from one relationship to the other? Personally, no. I mean, I'm not... I don't have like this crazy list of ridiculous boundaries okay maybe that's not the right word because i mean <laughs> <laughs> i don't have like crazy demands but it's very very basic like no, i don't like to be it's not demanding it's just basic it's like, respect yes you know like when you say this i feel like this this and this and i don't like that it makes me feel this way and the person just brushes 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 it off then i would say that's not a very nice person that's pretty toxic Okay. Because a person who's like a, in like a, a healthy place, they will try to listen and be like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Like, I'll try to fix that. But a person who doesn't actually acknowledge, they'll just kind of just do it again. They don't care. Toxic. So, okay. So let's go to, let's go to you, Sarah. Sure. Very simple. You, you've claimed that you've been toxic to some people. I have been for sure. Okay. How did you determine that now? Now that you're, you know, more... When out I, of it and not in the cycle anymore. What did you do or say or not do or not say? It was when I was out of it, when I was able to look from an outsider's perspective, not an insider's perspective. When you're inside of it, it's hard for you to see yourself as a toxic human being because you wholeheartedly believe that you're not being toxic. It's only when you're outside of it, when you're able to take a sort of like uh, objective point of view on it, Are you able to sort to to go back and understand that what you did was actually toxic in the situation? Can you give me an example? Because I'm guessing there's different types of toxic people, right? Uh, the only one that keeps coming to mind is just mental abuse. Okay. Emotional, you mean? Like yeah. emotional abuse? Yeah. That's the. But a lot of people do that, and they don't yeah, realize they're yeah. doing it. Yeah. That, well, that's the thing is when you're in it, you don't. So when I was doing it. I didn't realize it. I didn't notice. What that. were you doing exactly? Just like you were pushing her down or you were manipulating her or you. Yeah, it was like manipulation of situation. It was like, um, it was like calling a person names or just belittling them or making them feel worse about themselves without realizing that you're making them feel worse about themselves. You're being critical of them, but the But you thought you were helping them. Yeah. You're trying to sort of, you feel like you're quote unquote like educating them wow but your reality that is, doesn't sound cocky at all no but that's but that's, but that's that's what you, you yeah, yeah, yeah that's what you it, think in the moment you're thinking what I'm doing here is explaining to you what you're doing wrong when the reality is you're the one who's wrong but there's a possibility that both of you are wrong too yeah but I'm I'm talking about my personal yeah, yeah. brings me back to a question do you know what your toxic traits are like now 
uh, yeah, now, so now I recognize them a little bit quicker and earlier. Okay. I think I'm way less toxic now than when I was, than what I was back then. So what is one of your toxic traits? Uh, jealousy used to be a huge one for me, but I realized that the jealousy stemmed from insecurity, uh, like from a, an ego standpoint also and pride. So those took on the f a form of jealousy and then they, it goes into control and yeah. then it goes to manipulation and then abuse and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah Cause I was about to say like jealousy in itself is not necessarily a toxic emotion because you can feel jealousy, just not yeah. react to it. Right. But that's exactly it. But it draws out toxic emotions and toxic reactions to okay. certain people and certain individuals. So, so jealousy is one. Do you have another yeah. one? Uh, off the top of my head, no, I can't think of another one off the okay, top of my head. Okay, but you recognize the like, jealousy, which is good. Do you? Well, yes, I do. Emotional manipulation. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. I caught myself many times. It's like based on my emotions, especially if they're negative, I'll like want the person to feel bad. And then I was like, why am I doing this to this person? It's not their responsibility no. to kind of make me not feel this way. It's for me to vocalize and to communicate. But I feel everybody has moments, not necessarily are in general, because at the end of the day, when you point it down, it's at specific moments, right? Somebody, it's really rare, let's just say, that somebody could be toxic for the other person all the time, except in, they're in like in a very, very, very dark place. But in general, insecurities, fear, because I'm guessing you manipulate because you want to control. I think for me, it came from a place of, yes, fundamentally control, but it was like I would play this victim card because it's like I want I want something out you're of controlling, it. Right? You're controlling the situation But it was subconsciously done. It wasn't that I was malicious in my intent. It was just, this is what I want you to feel like. But it was, it was the fact that when you start to see that the person is not reacting the way you want, and it's actually quite toxic yeah well you can go you can go down a rabbit hole when you try exactly to do that you're and then the person resents more you and, more and sure. then it just causes even more arguments and misunderstandings and then i was just like why do i do this just yeah. talk just be honest did you find an answer to why you do it well i think maybe it was just the fact that i wanted to communicate without actually communicating like i felt like why don't you understand this but then i realized not everybody is me no one True. lives inside exactly. my head except for me so I learned that fairly quickly, like especially like around being like a lot of you know, boys, I have brothers and then boyfriends and all that stuff and guy friends. And I, it's like we don't really communicate in the same way. So I learned early on you have to be very direct. So it's like if I don't like something, I literally be like, yo, I didn't like that. It made me feel like this, this and this. But even going direct, there's some people that are not good with direct messages. But then that's why they would be toxic to you. Their insecurities come up front and then they become... They go into their shells or they play the victimization. Sahar and I, we spoke about our toxic traits. So, Sin, what is yours? No, I'm a control freak. I'm a control freak and I realized eventually... Like, but I, what, what toxic behaviors does that exhibit when you're being controlling? So, I guess I manipulate sometimes. I don't know if it's <laughs> manipulation, to be honest. But Are you going to talk yourself out of this one, too? No, 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 no. No, what, what I mean by it is I don't manipulate to go somewhere. I yeah. manipulate to actually, again, it's a mixture of both of you guys, right? Like you were saying, educate. Yeah. Because I'm like, these people are not understanding. So let me manipulate them for them to- Understanding you. No, not necessarily towards me. It's actually bigger than that. Okay. No, no, me, I, I feel that I'm pretty direct. Where I become toxic to people is when I'm very direct with somebody and they still don't want to understand. And I'm like, I lose all responsibility because of that. Okay. And I remain in that situation, but I tell myself, hey, I was straight, direct. My duty and responsibilities end here. If you're still stuck but in But do you remove yourself from the equation? Or no, you just I don't. Because oh. I tell them, hey, I told you. Okay. Right? And they keep on, keep on, keep on. I can give you a simple example. When I was a lot younger, the situation comes to mind where I met this girl and it wasn't working out. Right? She had deep feelings for me. And I was like, listen, it's never going to happen, you and I. Mm -hmm. You know, we can stay friends, right? friends with benefits, whatever that might be, but we're not going to be in a relationship. Okay. And they were like, oh, I have deep feelings, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, let me be extremely clear. Mm -hmm. It was brutal. She cried, gave her a hug, and they were like, can we be friends? She's like, yeah. 
But I knew deep down. It was not going to happen. She was still hoping eventually. And me knowing that, I was like, hey, I told you. I don't have any more responsibilities out of this. But I think that's That's unfair. toxic. Yeah. That's, I know it is. That's toxic. <laughs> but yeah. what is it called? Because but what you were doing is also toxic. You should have just taken yourself out of well, the equation. Well, it was very passive. But because I was being selfish. Yeah. Exactly. In that sense. Because I was selfish, taking yeah. whatever I enjoyed. Exactly. And I'm like, listen, if you're not strong enough to detach from me, because if she would have said, fuck you, bye, I would have been good with it. Yeah. But I was like, hey, but I would never tell her things she wanted to hear. I wouldn't manipulate her in the sense that yeah, yeah, you're the one and only. And then on the other side, like, you know, fuck off type yeah. of thing. I was very clear. But the fact that my honesty was my weapon, I told you, don't expect And then, anything. yeah, you washed your hands and like, ah, and then I see them reap the crumbling down or yeah. doing these ups and downs. And I'm like, hey, was it me? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. But it was you. Well, yes, I, because. I think in this particular situation, if you know that the person is not strong enough to walk away, who am I? That's my issue it, here. That's how I de- I actually have this conversation in my little head. I'm like... That's the toughest question you can ask yourself. Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> who am I to determine if this person in front of me is strong enough? Do they have the tools to actually handle this? And everybody has to go through their journey. Now, where I detach myself from the situation, I'm like, hey, I'm strong enough to detach and handle my shit. Do you, boo-boo? Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's, but that's your, an assumption. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You're making an assumption there that you, you can't make an assumption on other people. That's, that's the problem. But yeah, but what she was asking, it was an assumption too. Do you believe they were strong enough to, but it's you not said it at the you beginning see, that yeah. she had deep feelings for you. You yes. already knew yeah. that she was attached Yeah. there in itself. I would have been like, if I am not as attached, I will walk away. But that's you. How has Is you, that the only way? Have you ever been attached to somebody then in the, in a snap of a finger, you were able to detach yourself from the person? Yes. What? I'm a very good uh, I can do it. mind manipulator. But I'll be, yes. I'll be sad. A, because psych- once I'm focused on it, it's dead. And the thing is, it's a very easy trick. tendencies. No, 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 no. Of course it is. It's easy. It's an easy trick. <laughs> it's like borderline sociopath. <laughs> yeah, that's like It's a, an easy trick. Focus trick. on the bad. It's, a, it's, everything is a mind trick. So then you were never really attached to the person. No, if you can who? flip, because if you can flip it to only focus on the bad, then you never. Then so, you were just. So, so let me throw you. You were the holding book. something. Mm. So you, you told me that you had jealousy, right? Yeah. Because it's out of insecurities. Yeah. So you could work on those insecurities to not be jealous. Of course. Okay. So if I'm attached, and yeah. then I'm like, this is not healthy. I have to detach. Yeah. I just have to tell myself why. You have to right? work on it. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. This it's not instantaneous. Fingers. No, it's not. Okay, it's not like flip a thing, That's but exactly it. it's. It's like a uh, a workout plan. You're like, okay, I want to get detached from the, these people. Okay. So you have to find different strategies. So if that person continues to show up in yeah. your presence, you, you can't really detach yourself from them. Of course, there's vaccine for that shit. Oh my gay God. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I do understand this. Yeah, yeah. This I can do I, that, I, I but know. I don't, I don't. But that, it doesn't happen instantly. Yes, it doesn't happen easily. And it is hard. It's very yeah. hard. I've never done said this. it was easy. I've done this in the yeah, past. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. By you presenting yourself to her continuously even though it was just physical you were still present there so it makes it difficult yes I agree yes again it came with experience if you would have asked the 25 26 year old me he would have said impossible I needed to yeah, like yeah. leave let's just say, because it people can touch differently, uh, differently right yeah. some people vanish cut social media others find distractions until they heal yeah. other people ultrally focus on themselves and they're like okay what do I have to do to get better blah 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 each their own there's different techniques I just drive myself crazy you see <laughs> <laughs> that's not healthy I've learned that no, you have healthy. to feel to heal I don't even know what that means Basically, yeah me neither like again I would think my feelings I was not feeling my feelings I actually addressed this in another podcast yes. um, and recently in the past maybe year or so I realized there's a lot of build up anger and sadness and resentment that was there because I'm the type of person when I want to move on from something I refocus on something else and I brush that aside that's a distraction exactly yeah, that's and I wasn't healthy. dealing with the feeling yeah. I was like this I know because I don't like to be weak I was yeah. like ah, I don't need I don't have time for this shit but in reality it was a necessity for me to heal and then when I started to accept that then I started to realize oh my god I can heal it's okay to be vulnerable of course it's actually quite strange it's like it is a strength to be vulnerable. It's, I think it's better because otherwise it you're just repressing all those feelings and emotions and then they eventually come out on somebody that doesn't deserve it. Or they come out in different ways yeah. that are just they toxic. Do. They always come out. They always come out. Yeah. They come out in sex with me. 
to be honest, but it's not even a joke. You guys are laughing, but no, I I, I think we're laughing because we know it's true. Yeah. But that was my so go to my go to. So it was like distraction, my distraction. distraction. Yeah, it was a distraction yeah. or it was like a high. Some people go yeah. to drugs, alcohol. Me, it was that feeling. And it was nothing to do per se with the sex, the end game, like coming or whatever. It was actually just that that high during that period right. where your brain wasn't into it. Now, sadly, with age, that situation caught up to me. Because mm. now my brain is, my two brains are very well connected, sadly. <laughs> and when one is not happy, the other one's like, fuck you. I ain't rising to the like occasion. Full disconnection. Exactly. Uh, welcome and that's, to being a woman. <laughs> well, isn't that the, uh, the, the equivalent of dry? Because from what I heard, limp dick is the equivalent of dry. Pussy? Yeah. <laughs> You were scared to say that, huh? Yeah, he I'm looks not. at me like, is this okay? <laughs> Can I say this say word? word pussy? I don't know. It's not something that comes out well. No, no, I, I, me vagina. neither. I don't really like saying it. But I, I just... vagina. Oh, vagina. There you go. The VV. Anyway. <laughs> he can't even say the word either. Jeez, yeah. Louise. Okay. Whatever. My point being was eventually it caught up to me. And then I realized these um, exit strategies that I have. Right? And after my separation, for example, I went on this rampage where I was lying to myself saying, hey, I just want to have fun and this, this and that. But then eventually I was like, I'm running away from something. Yeah, and right? you have to face it. Now, I wasn't toxic with these people that I've been through because it was... Because they were meaningless. Exactly, and when it never stayed long enough. That's exactly, when they're meaningless, you don't... There's no toxic addition to that because they don't, they don't really exist. To you. Yeah. But maybe to that person, you might come oh, across as toxic. That's very true. Th that's very true. So it's a never ending game. It never. Yeah, exactly. I that's why like for me, it's woke. like my my decision making. I've always been labeled this way is very definite. Like if I decide it, it's done. Like I don't waste time. It's dangerous. It is. It is. But I know myself well enough now at my age. And I'm just kind of like, I'm not going to play this game. It's like, this is the way it's going to be. And I know what's going to happen and it's okay. I'll get through it. Now I jump to sports. So it's another thing that pumps my heart and my brain turns off. Now I can't hurt anybody. Well, maybe somebody on the field, but that's <laughs> not. <laughs> Break some knees and ankles. <laughs> no, but that's why boxing, when it came into my life, was the best remedy. It's a great release, boxing. Apparently. Exactly. So the, the, the trick yeah. is when I realized when I wasn't in a good place or I felt like I could be contagious in the sense of the toxicity, I would go into these blowout energy blowouts right so it would be sports or whatever and then after that I could have a clear head to actually analyze and study whatever was going on around me right. and with me and stuff like that it's because you release very, they're similar endorphins exactly you so you have more clarity of mind yeah. yeah because I have a lot of anger actually well I had no uh, really no. I don't see you the I mean I, I've never seen you in the angry phase you, you, nobody will not anymore there's no reason I laugh but now. you could see the streak there well, because I transformed that energy. It's simple as that. So the original, because people actually have tendency of forgetting that anger is a reaction. It's not an action. Yeah, of course. So you, I just transformed my reaction to whatever. It's like somebody tickles you, you laugh, right? So I changed that transformation from somebody tickles me and I sneeze, let's just say. Yeah. Right? And you can condition your body to that. Yeah. Of course. So, so every time I feel that little light of, oh, I think you should be angry now, it's I laugh. And I just walk away because, again, I tell myself, think about my it. kids. It's not worth it. Imagine I go to jail for something stupid and stuff like because it could go from zero to 100 real quick. Yeah. And that's what scares me, actually. Uh, that yeah. out of control part. Yes. The bear bear side. I can the bear bear side. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and this summer, what was interesting was I was paying a lot more attention to different people around me and how they approach anger, sadness, disappointment, and how for a short time or maybe a long time, they become toxic to themselves and to everybody around 100%, them. 100%, yes. And then I learned so many new um, terms like gaslighting. Oh, yeah. That is something that impresses me because from an outside, I'm like, how is this? How are people not seeing this? Yeah. It's so clear. When you look at it from the outside, it's so obvious. Yet the people that are in it, all the people I spoke to that are, were in it. They don't see it. It took them like months, years there's to a, actually realize. Oh, yeah. That's, but I mean, there's that, actually that a good happened. example. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. You can go. 
No, it's like the perfect example is you're in a room, you close the lamp, you walk out of the room, you come back, and the lamp is on. And you're like, I'm pretty sure that the lamp was closed. And the guy and the person is like, no, it's been on. It's been on the whole time. And you're like, no, I'm pretty sure I turned it off. No, no, no. You're, you're just talking crazy. It was on the whole time. Like you're overthinking it. So the guy is gaslighting the girl. Yeah. So it's like she's telling you or he is expressing something that they've done or no, this is what happened. And they're like, no, 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 that's not what happened. This is you're overreacting. It's in your head. But no, you're just overdoing it. Have you ever gaslighted somebody? Yes. <laughs> well, who? Him? No. Oh, you're talking about you? No, because I was looking how at Sahar. I, I was like, how are you speaking for him? I was like, I have no idea. No, I have. I have gaslighted. How? I I used to do a very toxic thing, and now I recognize it, is when someone would be, because I have been told this many times. Oh my God, it's <laughs> your way or the highway. Uh, fair people, enough. Fair enough. I've gotten better over the years. A lot of people, I think a lot of people have heard that. Yeah, it's like, it's your way or the highway. And if you don't get your way, blah, blah, blah. Mostly strong character people. Yeah whatever so the the guy was like saying this and he was expressing something to me and i was like oh, you're being so dramatic right now like i really think you're being just so dramatic and then the person felt bad but for me i was just like he just can't handle it but i was like that's so mean i was gaslighting he was expressing something that he didn't like and i just was like eh, it's in your head you're crazy you're dramatic I think we overanalyze too many things now in life. That's what I was gonna go and say because I'm like, we like do. That, yeah, that, that, that to me that like that was nothing. It didn't seem like anything. Well, really. no, I didn't give you the context, but I was just expressing something that no, because they I have, to I them. have people where they're in situations where relationships or at work, for example, or even family, right, where their parents are constantly bashing them. You're not good enough. You're not this enough. You're not that enough, and they start believing it. Course, because they're yeah. like, wait, I have this, I have that, I have a career, um, you know, I'm not a whatever, whatever, whatever. Yet the bashing continues, and then to a point that they start actually believing it. That's what happens. Of course, you keep it's a conditioning. It enough, yeah, you hear enough times, you believe it. But so, again, I, is it because they're naive, weak, uh, man, easily minip? Like I think we live in a ten ply society right now. Uh, come again? Ten ply, like you know, like you have a two ply yeah. tissue paper. Like now it's a ten ply. Like everybody's just like a soft ass cushion now. <laughs> you know what? I'll agree with you. Yes. Like society. Yeah, people, people, people so are soft. too. I don't even know the word anymore. They're I, considering. They're like now a whole petition. McGill needs to change its name for some reason. Why? I don't know. Everything you say is offensive. There's nothing that you can currently say that is not going to offend somebody. That is true. <laughs> That's why. Ten so flight. imagine our relationships now. So you're a couple of years in, right? You're comfortable in everything. And now trying to help your partner could be seen as a critic. Of course. Or bashing or degrading. Yeah, because like, why are you helping? Why are you saying she can't do it herself? <laughs> so what's the solution? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. But it's, a, it's the, the perfect example is look at the society like that your dad grew up in, or our dad, like same like era versus the one that your kid's going in now. But it Not wasn't the same. the same reality. Yeah, but like if, you're, if your son goes out and plays and scuffs his knee, it's your fault. <laughs> oh, wow. Because you weren't there? But that's the thing. It's like, it's like, well, how could you be so irresponsible to let your kid scuff his knee? Whereas when we grew up, like if you didn't scuff your knee, you were like, oh, you're a little soft. <laughs> but that's actually like, true. I'll, it, I'll, even go, off. I'll even go deeper on that because of my son's situation at school where before w my father if I would get in a fight at school or somebody would try to bully me we don't use that word at home yeah. he was like go out and go and punch the motherfucker yeah exactly now here today parents are like oh you're being bullied wait let me call the director let me call oh, the mayor goodness, yeah. 18 let people me, have to meet let me do a, a blog about it <laughs> I think for me personally I think it's really important that people start taking responsibility for themselves yeah, that's in fine. every aspect. That's fine, but it's now I think it's gotten to such a point that it's like. So I went to see my old high school. My sister started working at my old high school, mm -hmm. um, and I went and I was like, "This whole thing is amazing. It's crazy. It's developed." And then she's she's giving me the tour of how the high school's changed, and she's she's walking and she's like, "Oh, that's their think tank." I'm like, "What do you mean think tank? What the fuck is a think tank?" So I'm like, "I'm like, what do you mean think tank?" She's like, "Well, if they feel." That they've been in you class. You lost me there. You lost me there. Hold on. If they feel. Oh, yeah. Oh, if they feel up. that they've been in class for too long and they need a timeout, 
to just relax and calm their mind, they can get up at any time, whenever they want, <laughs> and go into the think tank and just sit down. It's all couches and stuff. I was like, are you serious? Like, just get up whenever they want? I'm like, I if I got so up- I abuse that. <laughs> I'm like, I told her, like, if, if that happened when I was in, in, in high school, the only think tank I would get would be detention. Yes. That's where I'm thinking. That's the tank I'm getting. I remember. Yeah, that's our thinking tank. Yeah. yeah. Now there's no such thing. No detention. It's just like, the only cool thing I found is that they teach them how to garden. I was like, oh, oh that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. But other than that, I was like, are you, I'm like, are you serious? There's a think tank. She's like, yeah. I'm like, they show you how to garden, but they'll sh- they won't show you how to do your income taxes. But yeah, anyway, exactly. <laughs> anyway, the educational system is already fucked per se, but now that's just having- getting worse and worse. But it's just bizarre because I get the whole individualism and let them feel whatever they need to feel and whatever. But I find it's going on to extremes, right? And this is where I'm going to bring it back to the toxicity and the gaslighting and everything and the victimization. A lot of people feel like victims. Everybody does. And at the same time, if there is a victim, that means there's a bully somewhere. Exactly. And now, where do you actually trace that line where he he's not bullying you, you're just being weak and pathetic? You're trying to say you're being a bitch. That's okay. I'll say it for you. <laughs> trying to be polite here. Say it for you. Because no, because I know a lot of people that are in certain situations where they're still in it. They know they're not happy. They know they say they deserve better. This is not what they want. They're being a victim constantly. Yet they remain in the mix. Going back to what I said, you have to take responsibility for everything that happens to you. And especially with COVID and everybody going through depression and everything, a lot of people are extremely too tough or extremely weak. They are, they play the victim or they play the superhero. I I, yeah. I don't believe anyone is a victim unless they label themselves a victim. Yeah. You know, you are a victim if you die. If you survive, wow. you are not a victim. You are a survivor. It's very harsh, but I kind of It agree. is, but it I, is the reality. And I, I'm not going to disagree because I think you're right. It's, it's, I, it's, I refuse that word. I, I, that, that shit is banished from my vocabulary. Oh, you're a victim of life. No, I'm not. I'm here. I'm living. You're I'm surviving. You're a victim of your own circumstances. Yeah, I'm That's a survivor. I choose. Yeah. It's my choice at the end of the day 100%. to let someone affect me. I preach. give that I gave them that fucking power. You need like a preach button. <laughs> I know. Preach! Preach! <laughs> Put it, put it in the think tank, yes. <laughs> yes. and I'll take yes. you know well, suggestions later. Yes, but uh, no, it's uh, it's something that I learned with time because having had a lot of things happen to me in my past, being a victim is very gratifying in some things. It it was. You get pity from everybody else. Everybody exactly. around you just starts pitying you and you feel But that good. attention in itself is toxic. It's a bad attention, yeah. It's absolutely toxic. Yeah. So for me, when I started to say, I take responsibility for everything that happened for, to me, regardless of who, who did it yeah. or what situation, at the end, I choose how I react to it. And I think that's been like my main focal point. But were you always like that? Or? No. So you grew into it. You have yes, to. because you realize there's only so much of this that you can take. Your life goes to shit. If you believe all this this crap, that all this, like I'm a victim, bad things happen to me all the time, nothing ever goes my way, yeah. it happens. Your life will go down yeah. the drain like that. Yeah. So when you start being more affirmative, you change your perspective, you start seeing things in a different light, it really does affect your whole life. Of course, I couldn't agree more. If and you I, start to see opportunities. Yeah. Outside of physical abuse, you choose how to react to what people tell you. It's exactly. your own choice. If somebody, somebody so can tell you- So physical abuse is the- is Well, the, physical abuse is, I mean, like everybody says like, oh, mental, mental abuse wounds are cut deeper than physical abuse wounds. Yes, I understand. Like if you allow, to, if you allow yourself to stay in a physically, not physically, in a mentally abusive situation, there is a part of it that you're responsible for. Yeah, but you're doing, now you're making it sound like they know they are. Like even when we're talking about gaslighting, a lot of people don't know they're in it. Yeah, but at the Until same time, eventually, some people. I don't think it takes that long to realize if you're, if a person makes you feel uncomfortable. Yes. If it happens one time, you can but be if like, you think okay. it's because of you. So that's the thing. So yeah, but that's fine. You could, but that's exactly it. You're allowing yourself to be that victim. But then. your body yeah, but, still has a response. Yeah. No, no, I get that because what I've noticed is a lot of people deny it for a very, very like. Of when course. You, when you talk to them when they're not in it anymore. It's all so simple, of right? Course, it was I, clear. It was there, that that situation, yeah. when he did that, when he said that, while he was doing that. But when they were in it, I have a friend of mine that was in a toxic relationship for a good 
five years. Yeah. And until this day, when she talks, she's over it. She yeah. had other relationships and stuff. And there's still these echoes of that relationship because she's constantly doubting herself. Of Am course. I falling down the same patterns and stuff like that? And as she was explaining to me, and she's she's a, a lot older. She's 36, 37 now. So she has that experience, right? But she was telling me, she's like, Sin, I was in it. Yeah. And he was so good at it that I was sure that I was the problem to a point that I was saying, sorry, let me be better. Yeah, but there's, again, like you're probably at the end when she started to believe that the whole thing was she was at fault. But at the beginning... The red flags were there. The red flags were always there. Oh, no, yeah, but then, you but know... But the thing is, is people always put those damn rose-colored glasses. Yeah, yeah they yeah, like, that's true. They're like, oh, people, I love him. I'm willing to accept yes. him for those flaws. I'm okay with him having those flaws. I'm He'll okay. He'll get better. Yeah. Exactly. People or he need, was better. Exactly. People need to learn to love people from a distance. Yeah. Because some people I love, but I keep them at a distance because I know they're toxic to me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm oh, like... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay, except for family, why would you even keep them? No, it's not like they haven't done anything fundamentally bad for me, like to me. But I know that their behavior, the way they talk, their outlook on life. To, they will if bring I, the worst out of you? Like it would just, it's so it, I, it gets to you. A great term that I heard recently that I keep using all the time is those people, you consider them energy vampires. Yes, there you go. Energy vampires. I heard that one here. Yes. I don't know. You said it? I've used that term before. Yeah, yeah. I've heard it on the spot. That's it's, for sure. It's a, it's it's a great term to understand that a person, they can be people that you can you can you can associate with. Yes. But you know that when you see them, they're gonna drain that energy from you. So you just sort of keep them at arm's length. That's right. And that some of them take themselves out. Yeah. Which I had a situation like this. Well, some pe most people that are being the abuser, right? usually enjoy these situations because they have an upper hand, right? They don't want to get rid of you. If they're sucking your energy, that means they're feeding off you. They will never eliminate you because they have the upper hand. But they don't, I don't think they know. Some people don't actually know that they're doing it. Yeah. I know people, they're so content being a victim. And I, I'm talking about the opposite, not the victim. The abuser. The like, abuser. But the abuser can see themselves as the victim. Oh yeah, that's actually true. For sure. In a specific and that is situation a where... That was that was my mental abuse situation. I always saw myself as a victim. Oh, Meanwhile, okay. I was I was the one doing the abuse. It's only when I so at the beginning I didn't realize I was being a dick, and then I think maybe a week afterwards I realized I was like, "Why are you being a dick?" At first, it wasn't. At first, I was. But like, that's maturity, right? A week later is not maturity. No, but you realize well, it. it could have been years later, like That's some it. people. <laughs> some people are in it for years. No, but I, I can, like the abuse lasted longer than that. I'm just saying that I started recognizing that I was being abusive a week later. No, I but still kept doing it. Oh, okay. But you oh. realize. So that's yeah, even yeah. added it to that It's almost like thing. you don't want to prove it yeah. to yourself that yeah, I am. I, it's I like, so you're denying like, it. Yeah, yes. yeah, I kept denying it. I just was in complete denial see of the See that fact. avoidant behavior? That's what people do when they, they see red flags. Yeah. And they avoid it. Yeah. And they're like, no. You just rather not deal with it. No, it's not. I'm just, no, it's not that. No, it is that. Just call it for what it is. Yeah. Let's, let's not waste time. Like it's the perfect example is when we were talking about like the, uh, the whole time when we were standing outside talking about the girl that I was with. Yes. And the three of you were telling me about the red flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but I was defending, saying no, you know, like you guys are completely wrong in the situation. But at the end of the day, the red flags won. So now that this situation is technically over, right? Yeah. Because this was what, last year? Yeah, around a year ago, yeah. Yeah, okay. So now that you have a clear head, yeah, this is over and everything, do you believe or feel where there was actually still a chance or maybe you could have done something differently for it to actually work out? Yeah, I mean, I I made it end at the end. At the end, it was me who created the... Uh, the fight to end it. No, I get that because I just wanted. Enough. To, yeah, and, but so I wanted her to make it seem like she's leaving me rather than me leave her. Because you would that would be easier to. I just didn't want. I I didn't want to leave her. Yeah, yeah, because you were addicted. But yeah, but I just He's wanted attached. Yeah, but I yeah, wanted to make her. But I wanted to make her like I created a fight out of out of and I miss you and want to spend more time with you. I turned that into a fight. Which is, it is a fight in itself. Yeah. 
people but usually. It, yeah, but it created, like I turned it into like literally, like I turned it into a fight, but that's because I was starting to det detach myself from the situation. I was starting to, to, to take distance and I wasn't appreciating the situation I was in. So I was like, let's create a fight here. No, but the reason why I was asking you the question was because a couple of minutes before you guys were talking about arm distance, some yeah. leeway and stuff yeah. like that. Now you only have two options or taking distance yeah. or cutting off the whole thing. Yeah. Right. So how do you know which one to do actually? With what? With let's relationships, relationship. with friends, whatever. Relationships usually you just cut them off. Like I mean, it's how many? Because yeah. you have many friends. How many relationships it, you have one at a time in general? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So how many? How many relationships? I mean, I'm, I'm still friends with the ex that I was mentally abusive towards. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, we're still friends. I mean, it took years yeah. of me to apologize and her okay. to be accepting it, but yeah, like right. we're we're friends now. Okay. Yeah. So in a relationship, let's just say, yeah, you're in a relationship. The person has red flags. Yeah. So how do you determine if you cut it off? Like it's a point of no return, or you give her some distance, like a break or whatever that means. Communication. It's all it all lies in communication. It's what are you willing to sacrifice for that relationship versus what are they willing to sacrifice for that relationship? And if you both come to a middle ground where you both understand where you're like, okay, this is what I want, this is what she wants, and this is where I want it to go, then that would consist in them being in the same head place as you. But that's who you want to be with, somebody who's in a similar head place than you. You don't want to be with somebody who's completely like True. off kilter. Well, so if somebody denies that the problem is only you and not them, if somebody says you're well, the problem, toxic. I'm not the problem, that's toxic. That's a problem because there's no way that in a relationship it's a one way street yeah, of no, but that's zero my point. self awareness. So my, yeah. my issue, my, my my question here actually is: is there a remedy, or you just have to cut off the limb? Again, it's communication. Goddamn remedies. It's communication. No, but that's what I'm saying. Now you communicate, yeah. and he gaslights, right? Yeah. So it's not me; it's you. Yeah. You're being dramatic. Yeah, you're, then, you're, then obviously the person is not willing to be open. Then you just so let they're it go. crossing a boundary. Yeah, then you that's just it. Let, so there's no it healing. There's just that's exactly. There's no healing if the person's not understanding. But if the person's understanding and saying, yeah, "I yeah, see sure. your that's point," obvious. in this, then yeah. yeah. So that's communication. It all comes but down to is communication. Is it a question of wait a little bit longer? Maybe they'll come. It's not a wait a little bit longer. You have that conversation. If in that conversation, the person, yeah, the person's immediately going to tell you like fuck out of here you're the problem it's not me then but you're that, like, that other okay, person thanks. won't realize it eventually let's just say you take your distance maybe they do because I'm really against but that's breaks. not your responsibility to yeah. sit no, there no, and wait for that. them to change no because I'm very against taking breaks in relationships yeah. I'm like communicate and you know face yeah. the storm right that's my theory mm -hmm. but in these situations I'm like you can't fix the situation without a little bit of distance meaning that even though you communicate it you have to give them some time for the dust to settle down and to actually analyze the reflection in the mirror they and should. maybe because what happens usually in these relationships is they, they break ask, up they that can be kind of dangerous but that's well, the thing is they like so the distance I don't know go ahead it's not about the distance so if we have a conversation yes. and you express disdain in certain things that I do and you're not happy with the certain things that I'm the way I'm acting or the things that I'm doing and I don't see it yes but I'm at least aware enough to listen to you then I'll tell you, I'll be, look, I need a day or two to just absorb everything that you just told me and I'll come back to you. That's somebody who's listening to you. If the person's not listening to you and they're just blowing up and being like, no, you're the problem, like fuck out of here. Yeah, see, that's active listening skills right there. Yeah. The person is acknowledging what you're saying. Yeah, no, I get that. Because what happens often in these situations is somebody blows up they're like hey i've been trying trying and you're not listening and you're like you know ref deflecting towards me it's always me 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 so if i'm the problem i'm out peace and then but from there what happens is but that's i think that's you're just being close to it again like we're we have a hard like we have a hard time listening to people nowadays we're just looking for a trigger word to react to nowadays. That's what I feel is that a problem. That makes sense. Well, people listen to answer and they don't actually listen to yeah. listen. Yeah, they don't pay attention anymore. They're just yeah. they're just responding without yeah. actually listening to what you're saying. Yeah. And it's true because when you actually take a step back while the conversation and you actually pay attention to what the person's saying, you're like, this makes no fucking sense. As long as your emotions are not involved, anger or like, yeah. you know, being very aggressive towards it. But I'm wondering, is there an actual solution or an actual way for that relationship to survive it? Communication. A, no, but if yes the communication no. is not there. Yes, then no. If the communication is not there, then it's then, dead. Then it's dead. But can it... 
That's why I said unless they're like a, a, a manipulator, then you're fucked. Yeah. If they manipulate, then you're fucked. But if if they're willing to communicate, if they're willing to listen and you're willing to listen, then everything can be and the out. actions so, so, correspond. So, so, I'll, get, so yeah. I'll give you an example here. Let's just say me and Sedalia are together, right? Yeah. We've been together for a while, right? We know each other. We live together. Let's just say. Okay. Right? And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, my insecurities, I become this uh gas lighter, I guess is the term. Sure, whatever. Okay. So <laughs> every time she would communicate with me, I would be like, stop bitching, stop being dramatic. I'm just, you know, work or family or I'm stressed. Like, give me a break. Okay. When I come home, I need, you know, yeah. rest. I don't need you to break my head. And then as it goes, as time goes by, like it keeps on going, right? And then eventually she comes up and she's like, listen, I want change and this, this and that. It's like the only reason you want change is because you're not happy with yourself. Stop That's, projecting this on me. Okay, so you're gaslighting the situation. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So now what happens is Sedalia now is worried that maybe I'm right. Maybe she is being overdramatic. Maybe she is... Uh, that would never happen. No. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Because the thing is, it's easy to say it's the guy, but it could actually be the girl too. 